Hey, this is Matt from Mad Boosting, and today I'm going to show you the timing bill on this 1986 Nissan 300ZX Turbo. Now this timing belt will be the same for the 1984 through 1989 VG30E and VG30ET. It will also be very similar to the Nissan Pathfinder trucks of that era with the VG series engine, whether it be a VG30 or a VG33. The removal and replacement of the Nissan VG30 timing belt will be the same on the Z car as the other Nissan Pathfinder trucks with the VG30 and the VG33. They're identical engines. There's just a few little differences. The timing belt on the VG33 has round ribs and the VG30 has more like squarish ribs. What I'm talking about I'll show you on the VG30. I don't have a VG33 timing belt so I cannot show you that. Well let's go look at the parts anyway. I picked a Duralast from AutoZone. You can get it at any AutoZone or you can go to O'Reilly's or wherever you like to get your auto parts. The Duralast number here is 84016 and this is the timing belt tensioner kit. Pretty much all it is is a tensioner bearing. This provides tension for the timing belt and I paid just under $36 for it. So that's probably the more expensive part in changing the timing belt. Now most people would like to only do this timing belt once. So basically a lot of people when they remove all the components to get to the timing belt they also change the water pump because that's under the timing cover. So that's highly recommended. My particular Z, I did the water pump like six months ago so I know it's good. So I'm just going to change the timing belt. Now the last time I changed the time belt on this Z was 2010. That was a little while ago and I drive the Z car pretty hard. So I'm just going to change it again even though it's not required but every 60,000 or so miles. But me, I drive the car hard so I figure I'll change it 8 to 10 years. I'll change the timing belt because I figure in 8 to 10 years you can easily put 60,000 miles on a car. It isn't hard. Now the next part is the actual timing belt itself. For the VG30 it's a Duralast 95104 part number Duralast or equivalent part number whether you get a Nissan, an O'Reilly, Duralast, you know whichever you pick. I pick a Duralast. They got a great warranty and my time belt only cost $19.99 but I just call it $20. With tax it was $21.51 so not too bad. $21, $36. If you were to walk into a shop they would charge you for parts and labor anywhere close to mm, I'd say about $500 or so they would charge you for this job. So I'm going to save you guys a lot of money. But the average cost of labor is about $100 an hour for most shops labor. So figure three to five hours easy for this time of bill. Because most Z cars have a lot of accessories you have to get rid of. Well, my Z car I took most of the accessories off that I didn't need. I don't have power steering. I don't need it. I have a regular rack and pinion. So I took off all the power steering stuff on my car. I took off the radiator shroud because I don't like it. It's in the way. So I took the, all the radiator shrouding off the radiator and I put on dual electric fans. I also removed the tensioner pulley because I don't need it anymore. There's no air conditioning and no power steering. So my engine only spins the water pump and the alternator. So I kept mine simple. So I pretty much only have to remove one belt. Where most people with Z cars will have to remove the shroud 
gain access to everything, remove your power steering, get it out of the way, or you know, move the AC, move your accessories aside, and remove your major fan belt in order to gain access to the upper and lower Tommen belt. So I'll be showing you that when I start wrenching on this project here. I don't expect to take longer than altogether a couple hours doing my car for the timing belt, if that. The hardest part is once you take the timing covers off, you have to be exact. You have to be exactly on the marks for your cam lineup. The cam has a lineup dot, each cam has a lineup dot, and the crank has a lineup dot. You gotta line all those up just right. I'm going to show you the timing belt. Here's what the part looks like. Duralast 95104. We'll open it up and take a peek. Now, whenever you handle a timing belt, you don't want to bend it or crimp it any more that's already been done to put it in the box. So pretty much handle it with care. Don't have any oil or grease on your fingers because Oil and grease is bad for rubber, and it eats it away. So if your hands have grease and oil on it, wash them off before handling the timing belt. Okay, every timing belt has marks on it. Okay, each mark is for the camshaft mark. You've got a line right here to line up to one camshaft dot, another line to line up with the other cam. You got one camshaft dot, to line up with this line on the timing belt and you got the other line on the timing belt to line up with the other cam dot. So they line up like this and then you have a crank dot alignment mark right here. So that's what you'll be lining up. Now some other things we're going to talk about is when should you change a timing belt? Well you look at your manufacturer's owner's manual and you can best say follow that. That's your best bet is to follow your regular routine maintenance on whatever your manual says. I would rather change it early before 60,000 miles or so because that's about the average they get changed at because they're only rubber with some bands of other material in there and most of the time when a timing belt breaks the teeth break off. Here's some old timing belts I can show you. And usually on an old timing belt, it's really hard to see the alignment marks on it. Pretty hard to see. Now this was my original timing belt to my 300ZX Turbo right here. You can see it right here. Nissan Motor Company if you look real carefully. Now I changed mine before it had any problems. I always like to do that. I like to change them before they start having problems, but nine times out of ten, they start getting dry rotted. Like if you look real close, you can see a little bit of dry rotting. The way I'm bending this timing belt, do not do that with a new belt. An old belt, that's fine, so you can see the wear. You can see there's a little bit of dry rotting, and it's basically just a matter of time these teeth break out on the crank side. So these timing belts can go pretty much at any time after 60,000 miles. So it's always good to change them before they break because there's two kinds of engines. There's interference engines and there's non-interference engines. Now on a non-interference engine, like say, like a lot of Toyotas, they're non-interference engines, you can break the timing belt and there's enough room between your piston and your valve to where you're not going to hit. That's a non-interference engine. An interference engine is if the valve is in the open position, that piston is going to travel a few more times when a timing belt breaks, but since it broke, the cam is going to stop. So whatever valve is open, the piston is going to hit it and bend the valve or make it unserviceable. So that's called an interference engine. When the piston can contact the valve when the timing on the cam and the crank is not aligned, meaning there's a valve open, a piston can hit it. That's an interference engine. A non-interference engine, they have enough clearance to avoid hitting a valve. So if you have a non-interference engine, you just line up your cams, line up your crank, put on your timing belt. There you go. Done. But 
Most of the Nissan engines are interference engines, which means if you break your timing belt, about eight or nine times out of ten, you've got at least three or four bent valves. But it's worth trying the timing belt first because it's a lot cheaper to try that first and see if your engine will run, you know, just to get you by. It's a lot cheaper just to try that part and hey, if the engine works, it works. If it doesn't and the valves got hit, okay, now you gotta break your engine down, pull your heads off, and change the valves. So that's what happens if you break a timing belt on an interference engine, you will have to change your valves out or at least more than half of them at least depending on how many more revolutions the cam and the crank made when the timing belt breaks because once the time belt breaks or the teeth break off the cam stops it might move just a smidgen more because sometimes teeth kind of grab and then they don't and then they grab and then they don't they might allow a couple turns of the engine which is just enough to smash every one of them and basically bend every single valve in your engine we have a 24 valve engine that's 24 valves bent. Now most engines when they break a time of belt the cam stop immediately and there's like half the valves open. So you'll probably get by with 12 bent valves out of 24. Or in this case there's 12 valves. You'll probably bend 6 out of 12. But I have known people that got lucky. So try it first. Try your timing belt first before you spend all that money pulling your engine, pulling your heads, taking them to a machine shop, checking them, checking to see what valves are good, what valves are bad, replacing the valves, new lifters, new seals, all that stuff. So that could cost thousands of dollars. So you might as well just have an engine rebuilt if you break a timing belt because there's chances you could damage the pistons too from the valve contacting the piston. Depending on what RPM you are at when your engine breaks the timing belt. So, important things to know. So this video here is the introduction to the timing belt. And I showed you the timing belt at a regular parts place like AutoZone. You can buy $35, $36 for the timing belt tensioner, another $20 and some change for the timing belt itself. So for around $50, you've got yourself a time belt and tensioner, brand new parts. Then it's just the labor. And if you do it yourself, you save all that $100 per hour of labor. So you just paid $50 for a time of belt change instead of going to a shop, which could charge you anywhere for three to five hours of labor, which is three to $500. $100 per hour average of labor in most shops. So that's a lot to consider and if you plan on taking a task like this for yourself it's best to have all the tools that you need which I will show you on the next video. The next video we're actually going to do the timing belt change on this car. This video is the introduction and I will be changing the timing belt tomorrow. So here's a good look on the Z. Here's the 1986 300ZX Turbo. Going to get a new time and belt tomorrow. And I won't have to worry about it breaking because you never know when they're going to go. You know? Alright. And everybody take care and mad boosted.